Linux on tablets offers a world of customization and open source freedom. While it's not as a mainstream as Android or iPadOS, several Linux distributions are well suited for tablet use, providing a unique and powerful experience. Here are our top 5 picks. Number 1. Ubuntu Let's talk about the general things about the Ubuntu. Ubuntu is arguably the most popular desktop Linux distribution. Known for its user-friendliness and extensive software availability, this makes it a solid base for tablet use. Now let's talk about the tablet relevance. While not specifically designed for tablets, Ubuntu's large community and strong support mean you'll likely find solutions to any hardware or software compatibility issues. The GNOME desktop environment, though primarily for desktops, can be tweaked for touch input with extensions and setting adjustments. Ubuntu also benefits from a wide range of available applications, many of which work well on touchscreens. Now let's talk about the key features for tablets. The accessibility settings in Ubuntu are quite robust, which is beneficial for tablet users. You can enable on-screen keyboards, adjust font size, and use other assistive technologies to enhance the touch experience. The vast software repositories give you access to drawing programs, note-taking apps, and other tablet-centric tools. Now let's talk about the potential drawbacks. GNOME's default interface isn't optimized for touch-out of the box. Requiring some configuration, performance can also vary depending on the tablet's hardware. Ubuntu also isn't as lightweight as some other distros on this list, which can impact battery life. Number 2. Fedora First, let's talk about the general things. Fedora is the community-driven upstream project for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It is known for its focus on cutting-edge technologies and its commitment to free and open-source software. Now let's talk about the tablet relevance. Like Ubuntu, Fedora isn't explicitly built for tablets, but its modern software stack and active development make it a viable option. GNOME is also the default desktop, so similar touch adaptions are necessary. Fedora's focus on newer software can be advantageous for hardware compatibility with newer tablets. Now let's talk about the key features for tablets. Fedora often includes the latest version of Wayland, a display server protocol that can offer smoother performance and better touch input than the older X11. This can lead to a more responsive tablet experience. The emphasis on security is also a plus for those concerned about data privacy on their tablets. Now let's talk about the potential drawbacks. Being on the bleeding edge can sometimes lead to instability or driver issues, especially with the newer tablet hardware. The community while active isn't as large as Ubuntu. So finding specific tablet related to support might be more challenging. Number 3. Debian Let's talk about the general things about the Debian. Debian is the foundation upon which Ubuntu is built. It's known for its stability, reliability, and vast software repository. It is a very versatile distribution. Let's talk about the tablet relevance. Debian stability is a major advantage for tablet use, ensuring a consistent experience. However, like Ubuntu and Fedora, it requires some configuration for optimal touch input. You can install different desktop environments such as GNOME or KDE Plasma and configure them for touch. Now let's talk about the key features for tablets. Debian's large software repositories ensures you'll find plenty of applications suitable for tablet use. Its stability also means fewer unexpected crashes or glitches, which can be crucial for a smooth tablet experience. It's also very lightweight, which is beneficial for older devices. Let's talk about the potential drawbacks. Debian tends to use older software versions than Fedora or Arch, which could mean less optimal support for the very latest hardware. Setting up touch input and configuring the desktop environment can require more technical know how compared to more user-friendly distributions. Number 4. Arch Linux Let's talk about the general things about the Arch Linux. 
Arch Linux is a highly customizable and lightweight distribution that follows a rolling release model. It's known for its do-it-yourself philosophy, giving users complete control over their system. Now let's talk about the tablet relevance. Arch is excellent for advanced users who want to fine-tune the tablet experience. You can choose a lightweight desktop environment like a Sway, a VLAN compositor or a tiling window manager for a unique tablet interface. However, it requires a significant technical knowledge to set up and maintain. Let's talk about the key features for tablets. The flexibility of Arch allows you to create a highly optimized tablet system. You can install only the necessary components, resulting in a fast and responsive experience. The Arch user repository, which is AUR, provides access to a vast collection of community-maintained software. Let's talk about the potential drawbacks. Arch is not recommended for beginners. The installation process is complex and troubleshooting requires a good understanding of Linux. Setting up touch input, configuring the desktop environment and managing updates requires more technical expertise. And finally, let's talk about the Pop OS, which is on number 5. Let's talk about the general things about the Pop OS. Pop OS is a distribution developed by System76, a company that sells Linux-based computers. It's based on Ubuntu, but offers a more streamlined and polished experience, especially for gaming and creative workloads. Let's talk about the tablet relevance. While not explicitly designed for tablets, Pop OS inherits Ubuntu's advantages in terms of software availability and community support. Its improved desktop environment, which is Cosmic, a modified GNOME, can be adapted for touch input with some configuration. It also often includes newer kernel versions, which can aid in hardware compatibility. Now let's talk about the key features for tablets. Pop OS generally offers a good hardware support, which is important for tablets compatibility. The Cosmic Desktop, while desktop focused is relatively clean and can be made suitable for touch with extensions and tweaks. It is also quite resource efficient. Now let's talk about the potential drawbacks. Like Ubuntu, Pop OS isn't designed primarily for touch screens, so some manual configuration is necessary. It also inherits some of Ubuntu's resources usage, which could impact battery life on some tablet. The community is smaller than Ubuntu's. Now, finally, choosing the right Linux distribution for your tablets depends on your technical skills and specific needs. If you are a beginner, Ubuntu or Pop OS are good starting points. If you are a more experienced and want maximum customization, Arch Linux might be the best way to go. Regardless of your choice, running Linux on a tablet opens a world of possibilities of customization and control. Thanks for watching. Peace out.